Okay, I want to know who's watching the FX show um, Assassination of Versace. I need to know if anybody else out here is watching it because I've been watching it now. This is episode four. I am losing it. This show... Ryan Murphy is a genius. He he's just he's just a complete genius. He just takes something that happened what twenty years ago and makes it feel like it's current current news, like it's happening right now. But I just wanted to spoiler alert <laughs> even though all this stuff is uh very public the book that the show is based off of you can find it still but I need to talk about tonight's episode or no Wednesday night's episode episode number four uh, House by the Lake I have been trying to figure out for the life of me if the now they've taken some creative license because no one knows what their time on the run was really like. They do know that they stopped and had drinks or dinner at this one bar, that's for certain. They do know I'm sorry, let me turn this up a little bit. They do know that uh a lot of the steps that they have shown us in the show actually took place. So, the way the episode opens, <sighs> gruesome. I'm trying not to give out spoilers and stuff, but it's like I want to talk about, you know, I'll just put spoiler alert on this tag. And since I don't have a lot of viewers yet, it is what it is. So, um, it opens with Andrew Kunanen's first murder, the very first murder that he committed. And it was a friend of his by the name of Jeff who happened to also be friends with his kind of, sort of, lover boyfriend, David. Brutal. A hammer is involved, and it's just, if you're squeamish, it might be a little too much for you. If you enter that, get some popcorn, because it was, whoa. I, I had to, like, clutch my pearls. I was like, oh, oh my, if this is for real. Long story short, Andrew Kunanen goes on a... Um, he goes on the run after this murder and he takes this guy David with him who you don't believe is under duress uh, he is with the killer and he knows that but you just don't see him in the vein of someone who wants to escape this situation and I don't know and it was uh, all the lies that Andrew had told him to kind of scare him into submission with the whole situation. It's really deep. Darren Chris, who um, who was playing the role of Andrew, Darren Chris has to get an Emmy for this depiction because. You think of him as the guy from Glee, who was from the other school, uh, the uh, all boys school. Uh, this is how I remember him, meeting him as an actor. Darren Chris was from the uh, all boys school, and he was a cutie, and he could really sing, and he was, you know, just like this all round good guy. And now he plays the polar opposite. And it's scary, y'all. Like his depiction of this man, this this psychotic, 
um, psychopath. It's basically, you know, this guy's a psychopath who lives in a fantasy world. But my conversation tonight, and why I actually wanted to have a discussion, anybody who wants to leave a comment, or maybe y'all feel like me, is if it happened the way, let's just pretend that it, their moment on the run actually took place the way it's depicted in the show. Why didn't this guy try to run? There were several times. One, two. They walked the dog on a public street. That's one time. And this is right after the, like a day or so after the murder. This is the time for you to try to get away. They go to a rest area. This is a time for you to try to escape and get away. They go to a, a bar with other people and bartenders and singers and and other patrons this is a time to try to get away and then they go to the broad daylight to a restaurant like in the morning because i think there chris or andrew is, is eating eggs yeah i think it's supposed to be the morning time this is an opportunity to escape. And none of these were taken. Bump that, even while they're driving in through Minnesota, there are opportunities to escape. Like my mom was a police officer growing up. She retired a police officer. And she always kind of, even from the age of five, six, she would always kind of tell us as kids, my sisters and I, if someone tries to grab you, if someone is uh, holding you under duress, these are the different types of ways you can try to escape. And any, no matter if you're going to get hurt, getting out is causing a scene is what you want to do you have to call it a tremendous scene make people look make people remember the person who snatched you make sure that someone's remembering their face um, let them uh, see someone trying to accost you and, and, and like you know really make a make a lot of noise jump out of a car uh, grab the steering wheel, try to crash the car. Like, you know, she would just tell us all these things. And I'm thinking this way since I'm a little boy. Like, if someone is trying to do anything to me that I don't want to be a part of, I'm trying to get away. Furthermore, was bothering me, not bothering me, because I, I come from Flint, Michigan, so we uh, we're raised a little tougher. We have to be, and um, we're not going to allow you to just take our lives. Like we're going to fight, we're going to charge at you, even if you got the gun and we have a knife, or we have nothing. We're still going to charge at you with the gun. Like there's going to be a tussle. I'm not going to just stand six, seven feet away from you and let you just take target practice on me. I just, we, I wasn't raised that way. I don't know anybody in this, in the uh, city of Flint that's going to just be like, oh yeah, I'm just going to stay here and see how this goes. No, we coming for you. So watching this, if you've seen this episode, what were you feeling when they were in these moments? You know, because for me personally, the very first time that you see them out in the open when they're walking the dog on a big public street. Now, mind you, I, I do understand that uh, for David, Andrew does have a gun this entire time, so he... He may, like, some people's fear overtakes them. So I'm going to give him the benefit of the doubt. He might have just been like, look, he's got this gun. I just watched him bludgeon 
Oh, I'm sorry. So a message popped up. I just watched him bludgeon someone to death with joy for a great long while in front of me. So I do understand the individual that I'm dealing with is not who I thought they were, and they are capable of some crazy stuff. Um, so taking that into consideration, this is what I believe should have happened going back in time, that David should have let his dog go. He should have let the leash go so that the dog will take off running and he naturally has to run after the dog. So then it's not just that he's running, he's also chasing after his beloved animal. Um, since they were outside walking the dog anyway, and then that would have grabbed some attention that way. Maybe he could have ran into traffic and just, you know, create a scene. You got to create a scene. Then when they're on the road, driving away, I'm thinking, look, I don't care how fast this car is moving. I am slowly going to slide up out this seatbelt and I'm calculating in my mind the perfect uh, drop and roll, tuck and dive. Once I see there's one, two, three, four cars in the side mirror that I've been watching out this whole time I've been driving, somebody who might stop and pull over to help make a scene somebody you drive imagine this you're driving down the highway right now broad daylight and somebody in the car in front of you jumps out and goes rolling down the road you are going to stop you're going to stop you're not going to weave around that person because you might hit them you're going to stop the car behind you is going to stop and it's going to create this whole chain of people trying to help this person while the driver of the car that you are in who has committed this crime is probably going to keep driving. Okay, so that's, that's the second option. Now we're at the bar. At the bar, they show him go to the restroom, break out a window. Um, he has the open world in front of him to leave, to get out, to climb out of this window and, and run. And he does it. He returns back to the grasp of the killer. Like okay, maybe it's because it's nighttime. You don't know where you are. You're not familiar with the surroundings. Y'all in the middle of nowhere. I, I'm trying to, again, give them the benefit of the doubt. But then this is the one that kills me, y'all. The next time, they're in a diner full of people, waitresses, cooks. I'm not leaving this table. And if I am leaving this table that we're sitting at, I'm going to join strangers at their table. And I'm not leaving that table. So, if you think you're going to kidnap me, make me come on this trip with you to my death, you and that little lousy ass gun gonna have to shoot up everybody in this restaurant and drive away in broad daylight because I am not leaving. I'm not about to be a statistic. I don't care what they think about what happened back in my apartment. I'll just have to explain it away because anybody who sees what's going on will understand that I am involved in something that I do not want to be a part of. 
polygraph me to the cows come home that I am not going to be a part of this. And I was wondering too, the murder weapon was found. Yes, it belonged in the apartment, but Andrew's handprints are in the blood. His fingerprints, I'm sorry, are in the blood. Like, he had that hammer for a good while. He enjoyed what he was doing. So I just I just would have tried my best as a grown-ass adult man. I just would have tried my hardest to get out of this situation. Like, you just, I'm, I'm not going to be able to just be silenced and go along with this. I can't wait to see what happens next. Like, I caught on to the series late. I was a huge fan of the um, American Crime Story, the OJ, the People versus OJ. I thought that was brilliant. Now, I'm biased because I really like, um, oh, I cannot believe I'm about to forget her name. The lady who played Marsha Clark. I love her from American Horror Story. And I think she did a great job. The whole cast, even John Travolta. Everybody in that one did a great job. But I wasn't really like, mm, I wasn't seduced by the idea of the Versace story because for me back then, when I read about it, I was a senior or I just I had just graduated high school and celebrity and paparazzi was not as big a thing as it is 20 years later so although Versace's death was tragic and he was an American so I don't think in our country that it was perceived as like um, stop what you're doing Versace has been murdered but the way that they're telling this story based on this book, it is really intriguing, really intriguing. And I can't wait to see what happens on this next episode. Um, episode three was also, I mean, and they've all been amazing, but episode three was really good. And Darren Chris, phenomenal. Even though I know that this is just acting, I can't help but be like just immersed into the story. It's, it's just beyond, it's beyond. Um, leave a comment, tell me what you think about the episode and how would you have escaped? How would you have got yourself out of that? Because from what I've read since watching the episode is that they believe that David was a victim of Stockholm Syndrome and that David uh, was basically afraid of confrontation and he didn't want anybody else to be hurt and that he basically would have taken on the guilt of someone else being hurt because he didn't do as he was told or, or he was, you know, like he was really trying to make Andrew um, better. So that was a whole different take on it because I didn't think about Stockholm Syndrome. I just was thinking about escape. So how would you have got out? Um, let me know, please. I'm curious. Bye.